गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अबाउट अमाइड कपलिंग रिएजेंट्स फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वॉट इज अमाइड कपलिंग इट्स बेसिकली अ कपलिंग रिएक्शन इन विच अमाइड बोन फॉर्मेशन टेक्स प्लेस बिटवीन अमीनो एसिड्स और पैप्टाइड्स इट्स अ वेरी क्रूशियल स्टेप इन द पैप्टाइड सिंथिस एंड इट टेक्स प्लेस इन टू स्टेप्स लाइक फॉर अमाइड Uh, bone formation we need a reaction between a carboxylic group and amine group so uh, this reaction takes place in two steps very first uh, step is activation of carboxy moiety and second is acylation of the amino group so um the various amide coupling reagents that we are going to study today are dcc edci hatau bop so let's start uh, with our first reagent that is dcc nn dicyclohexyl carbo carbodimide so the structure is this um these are two hexane rings so di cyclohexyl and since they are attached to nitrogen so the name start as n n di cyclohexyl carbodimide carbodimide now what are the roles of dcc it act as a dehydrating agent and it is mainly used to form esters amides and anhydrides it is available commercially as a waxy solid with a low melting point around 34 to 35 degrees celsius now how dcc is synthesized so there are two main methods by which it is synthesized uh in first method they use dicyclohexyl urea and in the second method the reagent is very similar but instead of this oxygen group they have sulfur group so the starting material is dicyclohexyl thio urea now um let's see the first synthesis how this dicyclohexyl hexyl urea got its name this is the structure of urea and one one hydrogen from both sides are replaced by a cyclohexane so the name changed to dicyclohexyl urea or um, to be very accurate it should be nn dicyclohexyl urea when dicyclohexyl urea is treated with para toluene sulfonyl chloride it undergoes oxidation and dcc is obtained and water molecule is eliminated so this is our first synthesis in the second synthesis the similar kind of reagent that is dicyclohexyl thio urea the only difference is oxygen in the above reaction or uh, above starting material is replaced by sulfur so the name changed from dicyclohexyl urea to dicyclohexyl thio urea when this is treated with our mercuric oxide this is yellow in color uh, it gives us our dcc water and hg2s now these are the two synthesis of dcc uh, moving on to the reaction the very Uh, first type of reaction that dcc facilitates is synthesis of peptides so um, all of us know that peptide is uh, synthesized by amino acids so two amino acids combine to form a peptide bond so let's see how dcc uh, works here so this is first amino acid and in this the one side 
the NH2 side is protected by this moiety. So that this NH2 of this particular amino acid do not take part in the uh, peptide bond formation. So for first amino acid, the NH2 group has been protected. For the second amino acid, the carboxylic group is protected. Now, after protecting these two groups, it is treated with DCC in dichloromethane. And peptide bond formation takes place. It's a basically a amide bond formed here. A water molecule is being released. The OH of uh, this carboxylic functional group and hydrogen of this NH2 uh, is released as water. So one water molecule is being released uh, with one bond formation. To understand in a simpler way, I have taken a journal amino acid here. I have not mentioned the R group, what R group is present here. And um, similarly, another amino acid group. Now what I, what I have written, protect. Protect this amine group and protect this carboxylic group. Then react it with DCC in dichloromethane. A peptide bond formation takes place. After that, we have to deprotect these two groups. So this is the journal steps in the peptide synthesis. Now moving on to second reaction that is synthesis of esters. In ester synthesis, the reaction is uh, a name reaction, Stiglitz esterification. So basically, esterification is a reaction in which a carboxylic acid reacts with an alcohol to form an ester. But this Stiglitz esterification is spatially used in case of sterically hindered substrates. And uh, in this reaction, two reagents are used, DCC and DMAP. The full form is 4-dimethylaminopyridine. So uh, DCC and DMAP in dichloromethane gives us a formation of ester. If we see a reaction, a primary carboxylic acid they have taken along with a tertiary alcohol, DCC, DMAP in dichloromethane itself, one water molecule is released and ester formation takes place. If we look at the mechanism, it is taking place uh, in actually two steps. First, the carboxylic group, the carboxylic moiety is being activated. And after that, activated carboxylic moiety is attacked by the alcohol group and the ester formation takes place. Now let's look at the mechanism. This carboxylic oxygen attacks this carbon. The proton is released and it forms a bond. So if you look at uh, it, this carbon, this carbon is this one and the carboxylic group gets attached here and this this nitrogen this nitrogen gets protonated basically what is happening um, if we write this group as RCO negative and H positive RCO negative group is being attached to, to this carbon and proton is being attached to this nitrogen there is a bond breaking here so basically that is happening here. Now this carbonyl, my, uh, carbonyl group is activated. Now the here we have lone pair and actually this lone pair attacks this carbonyl group. It attacks this carbonyl carbon and this bond cleaves and oxygen goes to that carbon again this bond cleaves and the nitrogen takes up the proton okay now what what is happening 
since this bond is cleaving from here so we will get a this moiety separately so we are getting n and dicyclohexyl urea so this is we are obtaining and for the remo remaining part this oxygen of the alcohol is being attached to, to the carbonyl carbon and we get r c o okay there is one correction this oxygen should not be here this oxygen is not there so we are getting r c o o r dash this proton gets released so r c o o r dash so this is the ester this is our ester and this is our uh, n n dicyclohexyl urea similarly synthesis of esters and thioesters takes place now uh, what happens ester ester is our r o r and thio sorry ethers are our r o r and thio ethers are our R S R. So uh, our phenol or thiophenol on reaction well with uh, alcohol, some primary alcohol. In this case, uh, we have taken methanol. In presence of DCC, gives us ether and thioether. Uh, <coughs> now. The fourth reaction is Moffat oxidation. What happens in the Moffat oxidation? Uh, primary or secondary alcohol in presence of two reagent, dimethyl sulfoxide and DCC under acidic condition gives us aldehyde or ketone and this undergoes um, via alco alkoxy sulfonium elite formation and then rearrangement takes place and then aldehyde or ketone is formed in case of primary alcohol aldehyde is formed in case of secondary alcohol ketone is formed let's see an example of uh, secondary alcohol so we have a secondary alcohol and um, dimethyl sulfonyl uh, sulfo oxide and dcc and acidic condition now the hydrogen is being replaced by this what happens a rearrangement reaction takes place and ketone formation takes place last reaction of dcc is heterocyclization reaction so basically what is happening a cyclic product is being formed but in this case some hetero hetero atom is there so um, we have taken one example reaction of malonic acid the ma in heterocyclization reaction our dcc act as a uh, catalyst as well as a re uh, reactant so basically uh, it is act acting as a reagent as well as reactant so malonic acid when reacted with dcc or some derivative of malonic acid reacts with dcc we obtained barbituric acid and its derivative Barbi uh, barbituric acid is a um, it's used in uh, pharmaceutical drug industry at a very large scale to synthesize some drugs so let's see the how, how the reaction takes place uh, dcc all of us know the structure of dcc so this malonic acid and two molecules of dcc reacts and forms this barbituric acid and our n n dicyclohexyl urea so basically what is happening one one molecule of dcc uh, is getting converted into or you can say getting reduced to your dicyclohexyl urea another one is taking part into the formation of heterocyclic 
product so if you look at uh, the structure look at the dcc structure what you have no no not this oxygen sorry nitrogen nitrogen and your c6h11 ring so basically what is happening these these two bonds are getting cleaved jo aapke yahan pe pi bonds hain wo cleave ho rahe hain two new uh, sigma bond are being formed here to form a hexacyclic ring and since both the pi bonds of carbon are being bro uh, broken so this carbon need to uh, completes it its uh, valency so it's it forms it's it takes up a oxygen atom and forms a carbonyl group here okay now from where this carbonyl oxygen is obtained if you look at this malonic acid only this much this much part of the malonic acid is being consumed in the barbitric acid formation two hydroxy groups are being released here so h positive and oh like two hydrogens and one oxygen is taken up by dcc to form this uh, dicyclohexyl urea and one oxygen is being taken up by this carbon to complete complete its valency and so this barbituric acid is being formed now we'll see the uh, second amide coupling reagent that is edci this reagent have many uh, names edci edac edci uh so let's see what it is this is the structure of the compound nitrogen with two methyl groups and three carbon that is propane in between two nitrogens it's a propyl group then again similar structure as that of the dcc and again ethyl group so if we uh, compare this this structure with dcc the only difference is the moiety is attached on both the sides okay and this uh, this reagent is generally used in the form of hydro hydrogen chloride so uh, if we look at the iupac name it is one ethyl so this this ethyl group one ethyl on the third position 1 2 3 on the third position is 3 dimethyl amino propyl carbodiimide so that is um, that is the name of this group 3 dimethyl amino propyl uh if we try to understand it in simpler way so what we have we have a amino we have a amine group which which has three different substituents two methyl and one propyl but since this complete is a substituent not the main chain so we write it as three dimethyl amino propyl and this is present on the third group of the parent chain and one on the first position is ethyl now uh, nitrogen carbon nitrogen and we have ethyl so this is our first second third on the first po first position the substituent is ethyl on the third position the substituent is 3 3 dimethyl amino propyl okay there is one more carbon here it should have been like this so this is our 
reagent and this is name as carbodimide and it it is present in the hydrochloric form so hydrochloride this will be the name there is another popular uh, name as which is accepted is on first position they have this group if you name do the numbering like this then on first position 3 dimethyl amino propyl dash on third position it is ethyl carbodimide and then hydrogen hydrochloride so that way uh what are the uses of this reagent again it can be used in peptide coupling in amide formation ester formation if we have to modify the protein and sometime as mild oxidation of primary alcohol okay if we look at the properties there is some restrain in using this reagent this reagent only works in the ph range of 4 to 6 and when it is present in the form of hcl salt it's a white powder with a high melting point that is 111 to 113 degree celsius it is soluble in water dichloromethane dmf thf this is tetrahydrofuran uh edc is moisture sensitive so uh, we have to store it under nitrogen gas in a cool and dry place it doesn't work with very strong oxidizing agents and strong acids also it is a skin irritant and constant allergen so we have to avoid the exposure to skin and eyes also so we need to be very careful while using this reagent now if we look at the reactions very first coupling uh, reagent for amino acid so basically a peptide bond formation is taking place first amino acid in which the uh, amine group is protected by a protecting group so i have not actually written a protecting group here i have just used the abbreviation pg protecting group is attached here and also on this side also so um, basically edc in presence of dichloromethane results in the formation of peptide bond similar to your dcc second reaction is ester formation so ester formation here i have taken an amino acid and reacted with an alcohol two reagents are re required here uh, edc and dmap dichloromethane again as your solvent and um, if we perform this reaction as 0 degree celsius within 2 hour the product formation takes place if we um, conduct this reaction at a room temperature it will take overnight and then the product formation takes place okay uh, like like in dcc also we were using DMAP DMAP is a four dimethyl amino pyridine so in similar way EDC acts in the presence of DMAP in dichloromethane and product formation takes place if if this R group is methyl or you can say the uh, alcohol is methanol we can get a yield of 96% so depending upon what the uh, R group is we can have varying yield like when when it is methyl or when it is not at all sterically hindered the yield is very high but in case of tertiary butyl the yield was 76 so uh, as we move from less hindered to more hindered uh, alkyl group the yield decreases uh now the third reagent that is h2 or hexa fluorophosphate as a benzo triazole tetramethyl uranium so this is 
this is the structure of ha2 uh, or hexa fluorophosphate so this is hexa fluorophosphate and as a benzo triazole so this is as a benzo triazole the two cyclic rings and tetramethyl uranium so uh, the use is is again it's a peptide coupling reagent and uh, the role is only to activate the carboxylic acid so basically carboxylic acid packed karta hai and it facilitates the formation of an active ester uh, again it is used along with a base that is an n diisopropyl ethylamine it's another reagent which generally act as a base to form the amide bond the uh, solvent use are dmf or any other polar solvent like dichloromethane like that now if we look at the reaction it's a carboxylic acid carboxylic acid when treated with reagent ha2 and diisopropyl ethylamine in dichloromethane at room temperature for 3 hours and this is another some amide uh, sorry some amine group is here which will form a amide bond with this carboxylic acid so this is another uh, react reactant and amide bond formation takes place this one hydrogen from this reagent and this hydroxy group from this carboxylic acid forms a water molecule and amide bond formation takes place between this nitrogen and this carbon so this is our product but amide formation cannot takes place without dipea your diisopropyl ethylamine so um, both of these reagents together leads to the formation of amide bond the last and fourth uh, reagion that we have to study is bop bop is benzo triazole one il oxy tris dimethyl amino phosphonium hexafluorophosphate so basically this also exists in salt form there are two moieties this is a uh, hexafluorophosphate group and this is the um, cationic part so this is your benzo triazole benzo group benzene triazole on the first nitrogen or on the first we will be numbering it as 1 2 3 so one il oxy this is oxy then tris tris is for this dimethyl amino uh, i have not written the nitrogens here there had been nitrogens so uh, the group is this this is dimethyl amino and from here it is attached to phosphorus so uh, three such groups are present so tris dimethyl amino phosphonium now um, this is a reagent again used in the peptide synthesis but its use is discouraged and especially on the commercial scale because it during its reaction it releases a carcinogenic compound hmpa that is hexamethyl phosphoramide so this this is the structure of uh, hmpa and it it is a carcinogenic compound but it can be used in the small scale uh, preparation if if we are preparing uh, some peptide on the laboratory scale so there it can be used 
but not on the industrial scale now if we look at the uh, reaction so what how the reaction proceed our reagent is added to the mixture of um, some peptide segments or you can or you can take two different amino acids and in presence of a base again the base they have taken is dipea similar to the in in case of ha2 they have taken or triethyl amine can also be taken so um, we have two segments of uh, peptide chains in this case uh, the nitrogen side of the or you can say nitrogen terminal of the peptide chain is uh, protected in this one the carbon terminal is protected now bop in in presence of a base in unsolvent methyl cyanide at room temperature the reaction is uh, happening between the carboxylic side of the first segment and amine side of the second segment and we get a peptide bond formation now uh, this this well is valine and this leu is leucine amino acid uh, so you can look at the structures but in case of uh, this peptide segment two valine molecules are uh, clubbed together and one side is protected amine side of the valine is protected so that way the reaction proceeds it's similar to the um, previous peptide formations but just to make you understand how that the uh, chain of amino acid or you can say peptide segments uh, various peptide segments are connected by using these reagents the same kind of reaction can be done using ha2 or edci or dcci so these are the four reagents that we were supposed to study if we look at the mechanism of bop how bop works uh, so the carboxylic acid part of the peptide bond loses its proton and then it it attacks on this part of the um, bop and it gets cleaved from here yahan se cleave hone ke baad here is a bond shifting here bond shift ho jayega and um, for this part we are getting rcoo this carbon on which two nitrogen are attached and both nitrogens are methylated so um this group completely gets attached to the oxygen wahi hua hai this gets attached to the oxygen ye bond cleave ho ke it's it just get attached to this oxygen now if we look at the remaining uh, moiety what is happening a double bond formation takes place here after cleaving of this bond a double bond formation takes place and these this pi bonds are shifted to this nitrogen so this nitrogen becomes neutral so again the remaining structures is as it is now this moiety is negatively charged and it attacks the carbonyl carbon and the bond cleavage takes place so this bond is cleaved and here a carbonyl bond formation takes place these pi electrons got shifted to the positively charged nitrogen and it becomes neutral so basically both the nitrogens are neutral this time and a carbonyl um bond is being formed here so basically what is it it is uh, tetramethylated urea both the the structure of urea is nh2 carbonyl nh2 so basically what, what is being formed here if we replace all the hydrogens by methyl group then the then we get this compound 
so that's that's it for this nitrogen moiety uh, now look at the remaining structure so what is happening a carboxylic bond formation is taking place here this oxygen is being cleaved and this oxygen is being attached here so along with this moiety rco group is being attached so this structure is being formed now in our reaction we were taking a base along with our reagent so this is the base the um, base attacks on the carbonyl carbon and this oxygen this uh, double bond cleaves and this oxygen get a negative charge uh, an intermediate formation takes place it is supported by a hydrogen bond this hydrogen bond depends if you have a tertiary amine then this hydrogen bond will not form but in this case we have taken a secondary amine so a hydrogen bond is being formed here now um, this bond cleaves and the base we have taken or a amine group we have taken and the carboxylic part form a amide so this amide formation taking place and this reagent is being removed so this is the mechanism